Hello and welcome to the back room. In today's video, I'll be going over more Mindustry schematics for uh, specifically for cryofluid. Uh, there's not very many in this video, so it should be a pretty quick video, but uh, cryofluid is one that you'll use for making your guns shoot faster and you need it for some manu advanced manufacturing. So it's an important one to have around. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and jump right into it. So cryofluid requires water and titanium as your two ingredients. So we're going to be looking for how that uh, is applied to the schematic. Um, in my previous video with plastanium, we got to see how we had oil and, and titanium. Um, so it's going to be very similar. However, instead of taking out a, a material, we take out a liquid. So we can't just use the previous design from plastanium. All right, so this first one here we have is 3x quick cryo. So this one you can see we're feeding in water on the right hand side here at the bottom and the titanium from the left in the middle. Now the titanium gets bridged over and lands into three cryofluid uh, factories. It then gets its water from this uh, water container here, goes over a bridge, gets into this cryofluid tank here. Um, now it then takes water fr from the outside of that bridge and puts it into there. And then that makes sure that all three of the cryofluid factories have water. Now we have to get the cryofluid out. So this one gets the cryofluid from here, passes it across the bridge to there. This one passes it from this bridge to there. And this one uses a fluid tank to then pass into this bridge. So the key about this one, you can see that there's a lot of bridges that are going over and under. Bridges do not accept uh, liquids or materials from underneath them. And so that's how this works. You have to make sure you're not crossing your liquids. Otherwise, you will end up with water and cryofluid in the same pipe and it will jam, which is really frustrating, uh, especially when you're, you're in a hurry trying to, you know, make sure you've got cryofluid for your weapons. Yeah, this is uh, this is good because it, it manages that. Now, there's only three of them in here in a five by five grid. You do have to feed in your cryo or your cry your water and your titanium from the bottom. Uh, so there's a limitation there. But other than that, I think this is really good. It's a solid A tier uh, cryofluid. So we'll give that one, uh, yeah, give it a name. All right, moving on to the next one. So this is my my design, cryofluid 2x2. Two by, two. by now you should have recognized the, the patterns here where we use bridges and we can put in, we can put material in from most sides. So your, your titanium can come in from all sides. The bottom has a little bit of uh, space is blocked by the outlet valve, uh, outlet pipe. Water does have to come in from the left. I keep that as a design uh, principle with my plastanium and my cryofluid. The liquid comes in from the left. Material can come in from any direction. These unloaders share the titanium between all four of them. And then your cryofluid comes out the bottom. Nice thing about this is that this is a six by six design with the actual factories taking up you know, five by five. Uh, it's easy to stick one next to each other and in a tiled grid. So this one, you know the drill. It's a. I'm gonna put this one as a superior. This one I've done, used quite a bit. It's really easy to plop down, feed in two inputs, and it works works great. Uh, you don't have to worry about jamming uh, because the, the the way the design bridges are designed here, it gives you four uh, factories in in the same almost the same space as this three by three. So uh, we'll go with that. All right, the next one here. This was one that I also designed that was a prob it stemmed from the problem where your level five factory needs a lot of cryofluid. And when you're in a hurry, you don't want to have to put three or four of these and feed in lots of different inputs. And so I made this design, which is the same idea, but tiled uh, two by two of that same design. So it's a four by four design. So it gives you 16 total cryofluid factories. Um, so this one, you need to be able to feed in your water and your titanium. Again, Titanium can come in from any direction uh, because of these unloaders. They will all share uh, across the entire design. There's unloaders. There's one, four unloaders in the middle. There's unloaders between all of these, and there's four unloaders going across every row. Um, and so you, you can feed in your as much titanium as you need from any direction. I, I like that idea. And then your water does have to come in from a direction. And I, I, I bend my rule here of having the liquid come in from the left because you... I, I say a bend, I break it. <laughs> you have to have the fluid coming in from a consistent direction so that it gets distributed everywhere it needs to and doesn't cross with the outputs. So the outputs are going uh, horizontally to this middle and the output goes down and the inputs come in from anywhere along this bar. It feeds vertically down into each of these. And then the horizontal is the outlet 
and then comes out this bottom. So this one I think works wonders for when you need a lot of cryo fluid when you're doing your level five um, factory. It, it's very compact and it feeds everything as it should. So this one's going to get a superior as well. All right, so this next one here is called cryo fluid line. So you have your water coming in this left hand side. It then bridges across and feeds in underneath these other bridges. And then your cryo fluid then comes out this end, bridges over all of these and continues off this way. This one you can tile. You just have to remember when you tile it, you take this last bridge and you connect it to the next one in the, in the line. Uh, you feed in your titanium on the bottom row and you, just, you, know, you can tile. It's not a perfect tile because there's a little bit of a gap between them as, as you stick them next to each other uh, and it feeds off to the right. This was a design that I wanted to have so that it didn't require uh, a lot of silicon. There's no unloaders, you notice here. Um, and so it's a good one. I don't think it's one I would use beyond the first couple levels. Uh, once I get past the point where I have to worry about too much, worry about my silicon usage, I would stop using this one just because it's harder. The long, skinny, rectangular schematics that go off to the right get hard to use. And so I, I'm, they're not my favorite. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one a B. Okay, here's one that this is the traditional way that you might have seen um, your cryofluid being created. So the input actually comes up here. It goes across these bridges into the cryofluid factories and then out into these tanks. And so it's nice that you have the tanks. They're a little bit unnecessary. You could use just the smaller ones for this as well. Um, it gives you a place to store it, which is nice. You may or may not need that um, if you're dealing with like, you know, your weaponry or a factory that doesn't need cryofluid right now because it's building level five and the level four is, is just waiting. It just gives you a little bit of storage. It's not necessary to have these large tanks, but it is a nice feature. I think I'm going to give this one a B. It's long and skinny. It is tileable, which is a nice feature. Uh, again, it's one that you would use earlier on, but you don't need for long-term usage. So, sorry, we're going to give that one a B. All right, moving on to the next one here. We have a cryofluid impulse pump. This one I picked because I was like, this person wants a lot of cryofluid. <laughs> You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 18 cryofluid uh, items there. They're using unloaders between all of them. And so you feed in your cryofluid from this plastanium belt down here. So you just fill that belt as full as you can, and then it will unload all the way up. I, I think this one would suffer from these last couple, maybe four, two or four, might not have enough titanium if you're unloading because unloaders only do about 10 items a minute, or sorry, 10 items a second or 11 items a second, something like that. And so you're going to run into uh, shortages, I think, down up here. I, I think there was some, some calculations done here. If there's nine of them and you only need one a second, that might be able to unload them all fast enough to be able to feed these. I, I'd have to play with that one. Um, one weakness of this is that this does have to be on water. And you have to have a clear piece of real estate <laughs> because if you get... You get a, a wall next to this, yeah, you're not going to be able to use this whole thing. And it's not usable. You can't just cut this in half very easy and just say, hey, there we go. This will work. Um, you have to, you, you'll mess up all your bridges if you try and cut this in half. So I think the idea is really fun. I would never use this one because it's too large to fit in the spaces that you're given on a level. Now, if you're playing multiplayer, this one would work uh, because they often have maps that have lots of space. So you might be able to do this on multiplayer. I don't play multiplayer much, uh, so I'm going to give this one an F. I, I would never use this one. It's too big. It's too unwieldy, but it, it is a fun design. So don't, don't get me wrong. I, I think you did, did fun on that, but uh, never use that one. All right, so here we have Cryofluid V2. All right, so this one is very similar to what we saw up here with the Cryofluid times 10. This one... Uh, Feeds in your water from the bottom or from the middle here, actually. It goes across and then uses pipes to just dump it into the factories. The plastanium feeds in going from right to left, unloads the titanium here and into these bridges. You have two unloaders per bridge, so you shouldn't have a bottleneck going there. And your craft fluid comes out the top and off to the left. I think this one works. It does require plastanium, which is a more late game thing, so you have that limitation. I think the other designs are a little more compact than this. This uses the early game design 
as you see right here, but doesn't have, but requires late game materials, requires plastinium. So I'm gonna have to give this one a C. I wouldn't use that one because late game, by the time I'm late game, I wanna use these other designs that don't require plastinium to use. I'm not wasting that material. Uh, it's a little more compact for what you get. So I'd probably give, yeah, that one's, it's a C. So here is your stackable cryo mixer. Uh, this one is essentially this one here, cryo times 10 by, uh, and so, this one doesn't have the tank on the side and uses a regular pipe. So if you stack this, eventually you're gonna start running into the pipe not being fast enough to get you enough uh, liquid. So this is very much an early game design because of that uh, liquid limitation there. If you'd wanted, you could have just taken this tank and used tanks up and down. Then you don't have to worry about this because you don't need titanium for the tanks. I have to remember on that one, but I don't think you need titanium for the tanks. And so you can just get away with just using lots of tanks rather than the, the old material. So this would be have to be, as written, an early game material. Um, and it doesn't have the tanks on it, which is good. So the cost is lower and you can start stacking this immediately. But I'm going to give it a C because it's, it's one that you would use early game uh, unless you adopt or unless you modify the design. And there we have it. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, I hope you learned something useful. If you have any comments or ideas, suggestions for uh, cryofluid, Leave it in the comments.